Any progress, Mr. Holmes? Are the steam rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Let us forget about that. There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Some dirt or... Look, Watson. He was wearing a ring. He very likely removed it before the steam session. The death is very recent. Between 30 minutes to one hour ago. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. The murderer was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. This key was covered in blood. I should ask Phillips about it. With the steam on, I'm unable to see even a few feet away. One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short-sighted. The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? Certainly, sir.
Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning, and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night? Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at 9 o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until they'd all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. How many people have keys to the steam room? We have just the one key for now, which Sir Gregory gave to me. So, this morning you opened the steam room, and then? I put the key inside my desk, but when they called, I couldn't find it. It had disappeared. I, I, I don't know where it is. Did you leave the baths at any time, or receive any visitors? No, sir. I did not. You are not telling the truth, Mr. Phillips. You left your work this morning, and you went to the post office, where you dispatched a telegram at around 7.30. But how could you... No, I... The telegram was for someone in Manchester. Mr. Holmes, it's imp... I'll tell you everything. I left the baths at 7.20. My sister wrote to me yesterday, and she needed a reply, or our mother is unwell. I was away for 20 minutes, and I closed the baths on my way out. Did you receive a reply from your sister? No, she wasn't meant to. I just told her to pawn my old school uniform so that she could pay for the medication. Did you check to see if the key was still in your desk when you returned? No, I didn't. Please, Mr. Holmes, don't tell the police about this. Sir Gregory would give me the sack. I need this job. I see. Frigidarium. I wonder how this could have happened. <coughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Glass plate negatives, a remarkable method for recording ancient civilizations. A glass plate negative is missing. It is a glass plate negative of an Egyptian statue. Archaeological findings, 
old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. A shape has been cut in the plate. What should be done with it? Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. Tools used by archaeologists in their research. I will need these tongs. I should analyze this melted metal. Selenite. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. The sample of dirt belongs to the White London Clay region, located near the city of St Albans. Let us analyze this blood sample. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. I must take a pipette and place several drops of hydrogen peroxide. I must take a pipette and place several... Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. I must take a pipette and place several drops of acid upon the samples.
The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver, Britannia silver quality. Here it is. By the eye he was punished, for he saw that he was not worthy. Dreadful. This is where I keep my post. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? None, Lestrade. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wart flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. An ordinary pencil. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. I see the join. This ring was repaired, and quite badly too, with silver. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. An old and rather dirty coin. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. Thank you. 
and then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. Mr. Holmes, the coroner... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. No. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. An unusual wound, inflicted by a curved knife, which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. Some light bruising, caused by a rope. The bruising is in lines. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. Good day to you, Mr. Holmes. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Uh, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has. Thanks to Sir Rodney. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well, I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no. Uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I'd shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, uh, God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room, and we all went to sit down. 
Uh, the steam was particularly dense, and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting, but we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck, and with all the steam, it, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad, and uh, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Um, uh, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. <laughs> 